Hello, everybody. Thank you once again for joining me for another edition of Ladder Play. Uh, I was able to make some changes to some of my deck ideas. And actually, in the last Ladder Play video I did, I was playing a mono blue deck that was actually the wrong deck. I had two of them that I was playing with. And something to watch out for, after a while you get so many decks built up in the system that you tend to forget which ones are which. So I had to go back and actually delete the other blue one. So now this, anyway, it's a long story. <laughs> I made this mono red budget deck that we'll be playing today. My name is Justice, my handle is Arcan Tuna. Make sure you subscribe for more content just like this. And uh, events, I do drafts, I try and do one draft a week and it's all free to play. So I give a lot of advice on what these strategies are for us in the free to play portion of the game. Let's take a look at this deck. This is mono red, it is hyper aggro, and it's climbed me all the way back up to uh, diamond. I'm diamond tier 3 right now in constructed, so I'm pushing mythic. I've got only a couple more days left in the season. I'm hoping to get there, um, but if not, I will have a new strategy going forward. I did learn that in the ratings, you cannot drop uh, your rank. So once you hit diamond, you can't drop below diamond, so there's no harm in trying stuff at diamond tier 4. Anyway. This insane red deck is very budget friendly. It consists of three fanatical firebrands, a one casting one one with haste, and you can tap and sacrifice him and it deals one damage to any target. Four G2 Lava Runners, a one casting one two, <clears throat> also a wizard, and as long as there are two or more instant or sorcery cards in your graveyard, he has plus one plus O oh, and haste. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, four shocks, one casting, two damage. Four lightning strikes, two casting, three damage. Four runaway steamkins. These are a must for this deck. It does not work without them. Um, I mean, it can. It can work without them. But if you're going to make a... It's still budget-friendly. Even with only eight rares in the deck, it's still budget-friendly. Uh, it will take you eight rares and one mythic wild card to make this deck. It's two casting, one, one. But whenever you cast a red spell... Anything in this deck counts. You put a 1-1 one, one counter on them. And you can remove three counters and add three mana, which is super awesome for light up the stage and um, risk factor, stuff like that. So you'll see, hopefully we can get it to go off here in a few of the, the play tests. Um, it's, it's fun when it goes off. Uh, four Vyashino Pyromancers, a two-casting 2-1, two, deals two damage to target player or Planeswalker. This almost always, always goes to the player, not a Planeswalker, and then it will trigger Spectacle for us. Got four, light up the stage, a three casting, exile the top two cards of your library, and then until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards, although we spectacle this for a cost of one. Um, that's that's pretty much how it's done. Four risk factors, yes, four. They almost always take the damage. They hardly ever play this and let you draw. It's almost always three for four, and then, uh, and then it jump starts so you can play it again. It's so awesome. I love Risk Factor. I think this was the card of the set from Guilds of Ravnica. Otherwise, you get to draw three cards. It's pretty dope. But it's good for card draw, too, to keep your deck going. We're running four Skewer the Kit at Critics, which is a... The spectacle cost is one red, and that's what we're looking for. Three damage to any target. It is a sorcery speed, so it's not the fastest uh, damage spell, and you can't hold it for the next turn or anything like that. Um, I was really hoping we would see some spectacle cards with an instant speed, and then if they played a, uh, like a shock land, you could trigger it, but it didn't happen. But this is kind of nice, because you end up drawing a few of them. And four Wizards Lightnings, uh, three casting, three damage, but if you control a wizard, it's a one casting, three damage. So we've got Gitu Lava Runner and uh, Vyashino Pyromancer are our two wizards. That's it, only two wizards. <clears throat> so sometimes we do spend three on this, but if your Steamkin's gone off, and he's got three counters, and you need to win the game. You can attack for four, pop your counters off, Steamkin, three damage for Wizard Lightning. And I'm also running two Rekindling Phoenixes. It is possible to have a third turn Phoenix after you've done some crazy damage. So you could, it's this gets insane. If we get the perfect draw on turn three, we could get our opponent down to five, and then at the end of that turn, pop the counters off the Steamkin, and then cast a rekindling phoenix if you if it works out because sometimes you can pop the counters off the steamkin for three and then cast spells to get back up to three counters and save a man and it's it's pretty awesome um if you have both your steamkins down anyway it's cool it, it, it works out i'm running 19 lands so this is hit or miss in in the arena uh it seems to be working pretty good well i'm gonna play in in the rankings um we'll see how it goes this deck is fun this deck is fun uh, and sometimes I do feel bad for playing it. Like, when it goes off, it's just like, oh, sorry, dude. <laughs> I 
there's not much you can do about it. Um, I have lost to Mono Blue. I've lost to every everything with it, so it, it happens. <laughs> Explore Stompy is hard to deal with. Like the um, this is this is a decent starting hand. Um, I'm not sold on Rekindling Phoenix to open the the uh, game, but I do like having two lightning strikes and a light up the stage early. So we'll hang on to it. And it looks like oh boy, both of my Phoenixes in the opening hand. This could be okay, but I have a feeling this could be a deck running Lava Coil. Yeah, yeah, we'll see what... Nothing I can do about life gain either, so if he's got a lot of life gain, this is a very slow start. You know, if he's running a lot of life gain, the, the game is over. If he can't block, if he can't resolve the, um, the Vyashino Pyromancer and I can attack, I can light up the stage, so there's Lava Coil, which will kill my Phoenixes. So. This is a risky play right here. This is risky. I feel like he may not be running shock though in this Boros colored deck. You might be okay. Okay, he's got Shalai. That's terrific. Um, boy. That sucks. So I can't go to the face area. While he's got Shalai in play. That that shuts us down pretty good. This is funny. <clears throat> Although, Rekindling Phoenix is a terrific blocker. Okay. Oh, we cannot overcome Lyra Dawnbringer. This game is officially over right now. Um, the, the moment you see Lyra Dawnbringer, there's no point to even continue the game. Uh, it's just, just how it goes. But, we'll see. Maybe we can... Mm-mm. Nope. Oh no, we're out of mana. No, we're not. We got a Steamkin, right? So we would have to... Let's go to... We have to kill Shalai. Or we're not getting through. Mm -mm, not gonna work. <clears throat> I could pop the Firebrand, do one to him, and then... And then... Skewer him again, but he's got Lyra. He's gonna gain life. Uh, if they're playing a deck that runs Lyra, we just auto concede. You know, it's not gonna work ever. But and I'll show you why. Um, first strike, life link, five health. Not gonna, not gonna happen. This is like the perfect deck to play against us. And normally, the strategy for climbing the ladder. Remember, we're all. We're on the diamond here, so they're playing good decks. It's not like you're gonna find anybody who's playing this janky business that doesn't belong here. This is game. There's nothing we can do. He's gonna gain way too much life. Um, but I do want to show you guys how this deck can can help you out here. So we do one damage to the opponent. That triggers spectacle. We got nothing. We so got nothing. Um, but we can skewer, right? The resplendent angel. And ideally, if we got a faster hand, this would have happened, but he would have lava coil us down. I'm not going to attack. That would be silly. We'll pull the man off and we'll drop a phoenix. It doesn't matter. We're dead. We're we are dead dead. There's nothing we can do about him gaining 10 life a turn. I mean, it's just... And he can draw through his deck with Dawn of Hope. This is Boros Angels. He's got Aurelia in there, too, to really to really knock us down. We'll just, it doesn't, doesn't matter. They're both lifelink. He gains 10. We lose quickly. He kills the Phoenix. That is true. And then with Arella or with Lyra, he draws twice because he gains life on two separate occasions. That's pretty cool. What are we going to see here? Another Splendid Angel. Yep. Right. I mean, so you can see how like, how quickly like this game's going to get out of hand. Okay. Got it. Good. Well done, Joe. That's the perfect deck to play against us. And I don't... Th this, the tiers don't matter as much as I thought they did. You can never drop below tier 4 of whatever your rank is. So, I quit worrying about it. Oh, okay. I got out of Platinum, and I... that's The tier 1s really mess with you mentally. Um, if you're in tier 1 Gold, if you're in tier 1 Platinum, tier 1 Diamond, even pushing Mythic, and you're like, oh, come on, I gotta get some wins. But, you know, it'll happen. Really, you just gotta grind it out. 
that's that's all there is to it. This is okay. Opponent goes first again, so you know we're already. I think this deck can overcome opponent goes first games. Three steamkins. It's only risky because they start off as one ones, and then a, a turn two steamkin is just gonna get removed real quick. And there's no turn one play. I'd like to have a, a lava runner or a firebrand in my hand. Not the end of the world if you don't. Here comes the thought erasure. Hmm. No, here comes a counter spell. Growth Spiral, okay. Maybe we're up against Gates. If we get a fast start against Gates, uh, those aren't Gates. Um, if we get a fast start against the Gate deck, we can beat it too. Uh, it gets pretty cool when you... Ooh, I don't like that at all. Frilled Mystic time? I think so. No land, so we're just on Steamkins. Here we go. And now he's going to drop a counterspell, no counterspell. He wants to kill it. Maybe he wanted me to attack before I did something. Maybe he doesn't have it? I don't know. Maybe it's an opt. Maybe it's another growth spiral. If I lose five games in a row, I'll be so upset because I was doing really good with this deck earlier today, yesterday. Hydroid Crisis is not as scary as it was. It's a 4-4. Four, four. We can handle that. If I had some mana. Okay, I'll get some mana. Check this out. So we will. Yep. I will shock the Hydroid Crisis. Okay. We'll use this Steamkin to grab two mana from the Pyromancer. We will go about the face area, and that triggers both Light Up the Stage and Wizard's Lightning, which we'll use Light Up the Stage, because we have the damage. Oh, shh, shh. I meant Skewer the Critics. How funny. Not Light Up the Stage. Skewer the Critics. <laughs> Either way. It's fine. So now we can swing in for a bunch. I feel like we're in business here. I'm going to leave this Steamkin in hand for a minute. He almost has no choice but to let us draw. Which he doesn't do. So I could pull the man off this Steamkin. That gives me three. Yeah, let's do it. And then we'll go ahead and light up the stage again. Alright, we'll pull the man off this steam pin. There it goes. See all that madness? He has to counter this now. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Like, it's, I don't know what you're supposed to do against this. If there's people who are on the ban, um, probably like skewer, maybe it's even light up the stage. Like, I get it. I get it. I. I don't know what you're supposed to do against it, but when it goes off, it is crazy. And fun, too. I, I mean, for burn, for some quickness, for some card draw, it's just... It's kind of nutty, you know? I, okay, okay, I get it, I get it. I mean, if they came out, like, next week and said, look, we made a mistake with uh, some of this mono-red business, I'd be like, yeah, I saw that coming. I don't know how they're... And especially if you go first like this. If this guy goes nuts, I mean, even against... Okay, so if this is mono-white, there is a specific strategy here. The strategy is keep Prince of War from flipping uh, Legion's Landing. That's very important. So we are going to lose the counter from this shock. Okay, so we're going to shock the token. This is the only strategy i found that works against mono-white. Save the shock. We're not going to go to face. We're going to play this very slowly for mono-red. Uh, we want to keep him from having creatures, which will both trigger uh, Convoke for his uh, Conclave Tribunal and flip in the uh, Legion's Landing. So we Steamkin, good here. And, oh, no, we don't Mountain him, we shock him. He gets shocked. He gets a counter, he gets a plus one. 
Afterlife. I don't care about Afterlife. You do your thing. I will kill this token, though. He gets nothing. He gets no creatures. That's not how we beat Mono White. Because if he has any kind of lifelink, uh, he pretty much wins the game. Like you just saw in the last game, we barely got him down to 20. But we got him down to zero anyway. Um, I like to kill all these tokens. This lightning strike will do one one extra damage here for my steamkin, right? But it's at the instant speed, so there's no reason to hit it now. I'm going to make him think I've got some spectacle business going on. Okay, I'm killing the token foe show. I need creatures more than he does. We make him a 3-3, and we move on to our next turn. He blocks. So he does save, look at all the damage he saved. He saved three, he saved seven damage to his face area. But there's a real risk here that this game gets out of hand with Mono White. If I'm not able to handle all these threats, it gets kind of scary. Okay, 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 okay. So let's go Steamkin. That's a 4-4. Four, four. Let's attack. There's a chance that he blocks, he double blocks my Steamkin and really threatens him. Yeah, I think we let this go through. I could pull the counters off of him in response to this, but then he would die and I would get nothing out of it. So at least for now, he only has one token. So that token gets huge. He's a summoning sickness. I don't have to worry about it. And another Sky Marcher. If you're wondering why I don't put um, Goblin Chain Whirlers in here, well, well, the truth is I probably should. I've seen a lot of other white decks run Chain Whirler, and, uh, and it works pretty well. Okay, so I'm going to take some damage, but nobody lifelinks 5, 10, 13. I had a feeling he would take that 4. This is, this is where it gets risky. If this is a Conclave Tribunal in his hand, the game is out of control. Oh, it's even worse than that. And then he flips Legion's Landing. Okay, so he had a really good draw against us. Not much we can do about this again. So one loss, one win, one loss. This is how the ladder goes. I'm going to risk factor again, which he's going to take without a doubt. He takes this to the face. He says, yeah, I can absorb that. That's just fine. And then I've got a 4-4. Four, four. I'm already at 4. I'm already dead. Like, he's won the game. So, so Prince of War has pulled off the Mono White. And I actually like Mono White without... Um, venerated Luxodon. You know what I mean? Like, Venerated Luxodon has been the card to have for Mono White, but it, he, we didn't see one Venerated Luxodon in that game, and he kind of handed it to us, so uh, I like it. It's too... Luxodon's too slow, you know? Just run with Unbreakable Formation and a bunch of, bunch of one casting. If he had more Snubhorn Sentries, that game would have been different. I feel like having two Benelish Marshals and two Histories of Benalia is the perfect draw for Mono White. All right, I'm going to try and get a one drop in our opening hand. It didn't work. And what does the scry have? A mountain? I'm going to I'm going to let the mountain stay there and hopefully I can play light up the stage properly and not think it's a ski or the critics this time. If this is a mountain, we could be in trouble. Red virtually always takes care of the uh, the steamkin right away. But see now I can like Drop a mountain into a steam can and hopefully a one drop. If he doesn't have a blocker, I can attack and trigger spectacle. There we go. So, either way, I could shock, get the counter, hit him for a total of five. Um, but I want to play this a little slowly because he's going to try and take a deputy of detention out and, uh, and drop it on our face. Okay, so three, four, five mana. Yep, we can watch. There it goes. He knows, see? That was a turn, would have been a turn four, insane, like six, 10, 14. We would have hit him for 14 that turn and played the Phoenix at the end of that turn. He'd have been at like three and looking at these giant steamkins and a four, three Phoenix flying ready to go. It's, it's nutty and fun. And that's the right strategy. See how he did that? He quits right when he knows he's gonna lose. And that way you're in and out of these games a whole lot faster, climbing this ladder. It's doable. This is budget. I haven't spent any money on this game yet. Uh, not that I'm against spending money on it. It's just that 
um, I started this project as a way to uh, to show what's possible after seeing all these like prime time. Well, hello, seeing all these like prime time personalities on on like Twitch and oh, dude, all right, let's not have a conversation. Um, you know, the more you watch people play at like a higher level, they just had four of every card. Oh, that's too slow. I needed a shock for him. So he's going to have a Curious Obsession, and without a doubt, he is going to have a Dive Down. But we're going to start pulling the Dive Downs out. Mono Blue is beatable with this deck. Uh, ideally, we would have had a Shock for that Terramander and would have ruined his day, but we didn't. So this is the perfect card against him. Yep, yeah, let's, let's pull him out. Does he have one? Is it a Spell Pierce? There's a pretty good chance he's got either a Spell Pierce or a Dive Down, so... We're gonna have to get them. There it is. Okay. And we'll light up the stage. Okay, the Spectacle cost. Alright. Now, this isn't ideal, so we can't do both. So I believe we should Risk Factor rather than light up the stage. And he's gonna save mana. No, he's not gonna save mana. So he's gonna Storm Tamer, which says to me he probably doesn't have... He could have a counter spell. So Storm Tamer triggers uh, Wizard's Retort, which is their counter spell. Um, let's attack first. I want him to think I've got a whole bunch of spectacle business going on. We could see a Merfolk Trickster here. I believe that would be a mistake on his part if he does that. He blocks. Does he dive down or does he take it? He takes it. This is tricky. I'm going to try and tease out a counter spell. Okay, interesting. I'm going to let him go. I didn't see a counter. So he's got a dive down, not a counter spell. Dive down number two. So a spell pierce. Non-creature spell. Okay. Lost a couple of good cards there. A risk factor and a light up the stage, and they're gone now. Okay, let's see if we can. If we draw into a mountain, we can Phoenix, and then we can block anything he has. And unless he's running... Okay. Unless he's running... Um... Like bounces, blink of an eye, stuff like that. We're gonna threaten the storm tamer. He ops. He's looking for a dive down. Did he get it? Perhaps. Maybe he got a. It's not holding priority. Okay. Opponent's at eleven. We've really got to handle this Terramander. He's getting card advantage, which I don't like. He may have a Tempest to Djinn coming out soon, which will be a 3-4. Unless he got an Island and then it's a 4-3. Or a, it would be a 3-3. Three, three. Another Terramander. Three instant slash Thor 3s in his, in his graveyard. Let's attack. Let's see what he does. I'm watching his mana also. If he, he... He could block one of my Pyromancers and kill it. And then I'm going to wait and try and time this Wizard's Lightning perfectly. He can't resolve all three of my... Those are all three Wizards. He could do a Trickster. Okay, so because he just did a Trickster, here's my timing. I'm going to kill his card draw engine. That's the big threat right now. He can block... I don't care. He's going to block my Lava Runner and kill him. Go for it. Go to town. He could block my Lava Runner, kill him. He could block my Vyashino Pyromancer, the other Terramander, kill him, kill him. Cool. Good. Without his card draw engine cooking, that deck is a whole lot less effective. Um, he he had it. Maybe he had it off for enough. That, that could be the case. I'm not, only at 12. And I haven't seen any of my big guys yet. I did lose two of these to a, a mana situation with an early... With an early... Um, 
light up the stage. He saves his trickster as a blocker. That is perfect. Alright, and we're just going to skewer about the face area. This could get spell pierced, maybe. No attacks. I'll also save a blocker. I don't like not having that fourth mountain at this point. Or a steamkin. I could have used one of those two at any point in this game so far. But I feel like if I can get this uh, phoenix on the field, it, it ruins his game plan totally. I can block anything he has. This will be a 6-6 six, six even, but I can still block it. And he can't do anything about the token. Except maybe like trickster the token. Which would lose its ability only for one turn. That might work. That might work. Tempest the Djinn. Alright, here's my blocker. There we go. He can pump the Terramander to a 7-7. Seven, seven. He attacks with his Trickster. I block. He attacks with Terramander. I block. Force him to pump it. Then I still take 5. So... Oh, this doesn't work out so good. Now he's got the Curious Obsession on the Tempest the Djinn. One attacker? Maybe he doesn't realize my plan of blocking. This is risky. So he, if he doesn't play a flyer, this is a good matchup. This is one of my favorite matchups, is mono blue versus mono, mono red. I've also seen some pretty successful mono green decks. Uh, and of course, mono white is good. I have not yet seen a mono black deck worth anything at all. I just, I just haven't seen it. There's some that are trying to do like mono black discard with uh, Priest of the Forgotten Gods and and some like rekindling skeletons and stuff like that. But, but for the most part, the four main mono colors are, and it's pretty cool because they still work. Are green, blue, red, and white. Black is not working. Not not working like the others are anyway. Not that it doesn't work. Uh, it does. We'll get the phoenix. He can't trickster. Nope, that's game. Okay, cool. Had this been uh, light up the stage, I could have won because he would only be uh, he'd only be at five, and there's a chance I could draw two cards that would equal five damage pretty easily actually in this deck. Um, but we lose to Mono Blue. Well done. No. I don't want to. I did want to concede. Wait, what happened there? It's interesting. Like the game client just shuts down when you <laughs> when you go to concede now. It's like, hey, we notice you want to concede. Have a nice day. We're going to just uh, close you down here, buddy. Oh, well. So we'll get back into it. We'll do one more game. So it's like win-loss, win-loss, win-loss so far. Uh, and that happens, especially as you climb the ranks, you know, in Diamond already Tier 3. Like, you're playing against other players who have also climbed the ranks, and they're pretty good at playing the decks that they're playing. Really, it's just a, just a numbers game. Pretty Princess. <laughs> this is funny. And at Tier 4, even, I played a few decks that I wouldn't normally play. Opponent goes first again. Okay. This is a good hand for us to go first with. Uh, but, you know, whatever, we'll take it. I feel like it's good that he had a Hinterland Harbor first, that way we can sort of catch back up and... Oh, dude, alright. Did I play against this guy already? I might have. I think Steamkin is a safe play here. We'll go for it. And then next turn we can we can lava runner and or wizard's lightning with lava runner down he does count as a wizard cool either way all right so what we'll do is we'll just do double lava runner which will trigger our steamkin twice and then of course he's playing white so next turn that means we will eat a settle the wreckage how fun will that be Although our Steamkin's going to pop. Check this out. We're going to pop the Steamkin turn three into some crazy business. Oh, he's tapping land. I like this. Revitalize. Perfect. 
I don't worry so much about revitalize in terms of like uh, life gain because it's only three. It's not really all that crazy. All right, so we are going to send a wizard's lightning up to dude. Right. Our steamkin goes off. We pull the mana off the steamkin. We're gonna light up the stage and hopefully we get another mountain. He gets a counter back because we cast a red spell. We're gonna mountain again. We're gonna light up the stage again. He gets another counter. We get another light up the stage and a skewer the critic. So we're gonna do our skewer. This is insane right here. I can't believe this is allowed. We're gonna pull the mana off. We're gonna light up the stage again with our free mana that we just got. Two risk factors, so that's not quite as ideal as we'd hoped. We're gonna drop a Pyromancer. There goes that two mana. We're gonna shock him, and that's game. This is insane. How is this allowed? <laughs> what are you supposed to do? I don't know what you're supposed to do. You just die. This is so crazy. It's like, like those are the games where I do, I do feel bad. Like, oh man, sorry, dude. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how you keep from getting frustrated. That's like those Turbo Fog players when they're just playing solitaire the whole time. But like, how did you not know they were gonna ban Nexus of Fate? I mean, like, come on, you knew, right? So if they ban one of these cards, like I would get it instantly. I'd be like, yeah, I, I, I could see that happening. This is kind of, this is kind of silly to, to go through here. Um, and we'll make this our last game. Win or lose, last game. It doesn't, it doesn't much matter. We're still in Diamond Tier 3. And this is how I do it when I climb the ladder. I just play over and over and over again. Of course, if I don't have the camera on, I can see it a lot faster. Um, just because I kind of know how the games are going to end. And I don't, I don't wait to kind of show the process. I feel like showing that process and, and how I know that it is the game is over, like when when we saw uh, Lyra. The second Lyra Dawnbringer comes down, I concede. Like, I can't beat it. I don't have a plan for it. You got me this time. I also save my shocks against Mono Red. Uh, you want to shock the Steamkin, not the face. Very important, although he's done a good chunk of damage there, which I don't appreciate, but whatever. Steamkins make this deck, deck go. So if you leave the Steamkins out there, uh, it's gonna be an uphill battle. If you don't, I mean, you could lose in one turn with a Steamkin down. Two Steamkins, forget about it. Hopefully he starts shocking my dudes. No. He's burning all the face area, so that's pretty good of him to do that. We're gonna attack to trigger the spectacle. I feel like doing four damage early with Risk Factor is a good idea, but I do like having the wizard down for wizard's lightning. I'm gonna go take it a little slowly. He can't do 10 in one turn. And I'm sitting on 12 damage. If these two wizards live, I can do 12. If he plays experimental frenzy, we're in business. Even if he plays like a goblin chain whirler, I'm still not upset about that wizard's lightning for the full cost. Okay, we got him. Three, three, and... Oh, I'm out of mana! <laughs> what? <laughs> right, I needed one more mana. Chain Whirler, and he's like, I got you now, buddy. I mean, but you're, seriously, you're one, dude. It's, it's cool. Right on, guys. This is so budget, it is so fun, it's fast, uh, it's an easy way to climb the ladder. With any luck, I'll hit Mythic with this deck. Um, you know, you can make it with just eight rare wild cards and one mythic wild card. You do get a Rekindling Phoenix for free from the playset. Thanks so much for watching. Do enjoy the rest of your weekend.